Good morning. It's April 21st. April 21st, 2023. Excuse me. Um, what I'm thinking about today is how cool it is. Hopefully it's not super jarring, but how cool it is that the world is at a point where it's almost impossible to deny some of like the systemic corruption and activity that is contributing to our uh, oppressed society, our un unhealthy society. Um, it's just at a breaking point. Like you simply cannot deny certain things anymore. Another thing that I woke up thinking about for some reason was the fact that the, um, uh, CIA has acknowledged, you know, de declassified for a long time that they recognize the existence of multiple dimensions. So I think that people who are science and logic driven are like, well, that's not, you know, what the experts say, what the science says, uh, what the government says. And it's like, at this point, it is, we live in a multidimensional reality that's governed by, what that means is that the nature of reality is far more complex than what we can see and experience in our world. And the, the, the common ground is the energetic language. Uh, for so much of my life, I've known that, but being, you know, a young person who's been coming into their own for my, you know, my whole like childhood, teens, young adulthood, it hasn't been, it, there's just so much cognitive dis dissonance between what I experience, what I know to be true, what I, what I see, what happens, and and then not really having people in my life who validate it and, and agree and support it. Obviously that's changing and uh, has been changing for a very long time and I feel very confident in the things that I experience now. But then there's a transitional period of being like, well, I, I know it to be true, but it, it still affects me when I'm talking about certain things and people are really uninterested in hearing it or believing it because it threatens the safety of the world that they've built around them and their ability to kind of latch on to certain truth points and touchstones. The deconstruction of a world or a belief system is traumatizing that somebody has relied on for a long time. That can be really traumatizing and honestly even if people want to do it sometimes they don't know how because it's like well what do I sub in for this fundamental truth that I've made all these life decisions around. How can I take out, and this brings me back to my twisties analogy, that fundamental twist, that core programming, that root layer of a worldview or a belief system. If you pull out the bottom Jenga block, how's it all gonna still stay sub supported and sustained? And this is tower, I'm getting tower from tarot, the tower card. Um, it's not meant to, you're not meant to be able to sub something in for the lowest Jenga block. The tower falls, you know, and when that happens during the game, it's not a big deal. You just rebuild it and then you go again and, and you, you let it fall. Like that's a life cycle. Um, and the world is made up of life cycles, you know, it's okay for things to change. Nature shows us that death and rebirth is part of the reality that we live in. Um, I didn't really have a point in starting this, but I'm just, I'm, I'm in a good mood, which is funny because I, I think it's important to be able to hold some of this really serious, intense, um, concerning stuff that's going on and connect to a deeper truth of our own, like power and autonomy, being able to take up space. Uh, my prayer, my hope is that a lot of people who are becoming a little bit more wise to the ways of the world at this point in history don't fall into a depressive or upset or um, hopeless, right? Despair is the frequency that I am picking up on. That is really, really challenging. Um, I've been in the depths of the pits of despair myself. It's not a nice place to be. It's very hard to come, come out of it. Um, so what am I thinking about? I'm thinking about chemtrails, you know, lots of things that it's just like, they, there's no, there's not even any hiding any of the things that are going on. There's not, we're being told it. Um, I've been thinking about how life technology, AI, um, algorithmic contributions to how we experience reality, right? Like I was talking to a friend who was telling me about uh, a certain kind of AI 
and he's like well I see it all the time like it's what everybody's talking about all the articles blah 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 and I'm like see that's interesting because you say everybody's talking about it and I would have no idea because that's not what the algorithm shows me because I don't talk about that it doesn't hear me expressing interest in that not part of my world what's part of my world is like skincare products and like metallic flip-flops those are the things that get targeted at me uh I mean also all this bullshit bogus um health industry about like do you have digestive issues here's a meal shake that will supplement all of your nutritional deficits based on the like food desert nutritionally vacant um poisoned you know food chain in order to make up for that which has been intentionally peddled to us to make us sick fat and slow so that we need medications and um aren't as capable of accessing our optimized energetic bodily system and pure potentiality uh, I mean, it's comical. Oh my God, it's comical. I was I was recording some of the ads that I was being shown like, Ugh! I'm sorry, this is so fragmented, but it, I'm getting so much um, stuff that I want to touch on. There was an advertisement that I saw that was like this mechanical muscle microcurrent trigger. So it's like all these people like, I've never been in better shape and I didn't even have to get off the couch. And you like put it into your shorts and it like jazzles your ass muscles and gets them tight because it's triggering them causing them to contract and it's like what dystopic world do we live in that uh <laughs> people are you know we have these technologies now where you can put something in your shorts that jiggles your body for you so that you don't have to get up to combat the uh unhealthy uh physical state that we've declined into you know collectively I know that I'm not saying everyone's unhealthy but honestly you have to put in a lot of effort to exist outside of like the what you know the stuff that is most accessible um <laughs> um Okay, uh, something, something that I've, something that I'm being moved to talk about. This deserves its own video. People who are like, you know, the love, light, and magic, like light workers, the spiritual bypass people, the people that say that you can, you don't have to play into this issue um, in order to help it. You know, if you go work on yourself and improve your, yourself, you are helping those who are suffering. You know, a lot of people have such pure and good hearts and they're empathic and they feel the weight of the worldly issues and it, it bogs them down and they f they almost feel powerless because it's like how can I help how can I change this this is awful this is happening uh I don't feel comfortable being like I'm gonna go work on myself because that issue needs me and I need to be able to do something about that um I do think that if you work on yourself you're working on the issues that you care about because it's all about the energetics and it doesn't make sense to people if you tell certain people who are like it, it just it doesn't make sense to the logical mind because it defies logic it's happening outside of the space and time grid it's happening outside of uh the causal you know cause and effect um continuum that the 3d reality is contingent upon and so for instance a lot of people right flower of life sacred geometry there's this camp of people in the spiritual community that are like, it is the daisy of doom. It is the, it is the, it is the flat flower of death because it's like, it's phase locked and it can't, um, I mean, it's a pattern, right? Mathematically, it's what all creation is based off of this seed of life, a flower of life, these things that build upon each other, like, uh, like, you know, atomic structures, like particles, like these systems. And some people say, uh, that it is, like low vibrational or locks people. It's all about, it's like talking about that. Well, I think it's misunderstood how those patterns, that that knowledge of those sacred structures, uh, basically the coding of the matrix, if you will. You know, you can look into uh, growth patterns of leaves and, and nature and coral and succulents and uh, even, you know, jellyfish and the construction of the natural world. There's a programming that's that's uh, available to be decoded from all of that. 
um, you can accurately predict how something will form in nature based off of the patterns, period. And in the collective trauma of humanity, the collective subconscious of humanity, which again, people just disregard all of this information because they're like, that's not a thing. <laughs> like, just because you don't understand it and you can't connect to it doesn't mean that you are not part of it. Um, there is, I would say like the rise and fall of empires and harnessing the, the laws of the universe that are like, it's, it's almost godly, right? Nature, people say the uh, power of the universe expressing itself through nature, all of the beauty of the natural world, blah, blah, blah. The sacred geometry stuff is the the underpinnings of that magic and that beautiful expression of energy continuing to grow and evolve in the universe. That I, I would say with free will and in this realm that humans live in, you know, they say, people have said that it can be um, harnessed to create things I can't I can't touch on this alright I gotta go get my Starbucks order I'm here's a here's a win though I, I did post a couple YouTube videos they're all from 2021 which is weird I was combing through my folders and I was like where you know where do I start I'm not gonna be editing them down which is mortifying because you know I'm just like I just like I'll be like burping and hiccuping and spacing out and pausing for a minute, staring off into space. And I always thought like, no problem. I'll always edit them down and, and take things out. But there's, it's too, um, there's too much to be edited out. Um, and it's, it's going to distract me from being able to get my, my information out there. Um, and this is for, for me too, like first and foremost, being able to express and share my ideas so that I don't keep going in the same loops. I really want to develop my ideas and start taking them more seriously. But uh, back to the thing about feeling like you're in, in order to acknowledge certain things, you're basically walking into these pits of despair. Like there's a, there's another stage to it, which is really empowering and optimistic. And you, f you feel how unthreatening these woes of the world are. Uh, they're so incredibly effective at making things seem incredibly dire and incredibly sad and incredibly monumental and incredibly inescapable. And at the same time, you know, it, there's all of these memes and hilarious content and, uh, you know, f filthy, like deranged, sexual, like all of this really polarized, chaotic energy that's how we're kept in captivity, okay? You know, by the phone, going back to the thing where it's like, if, if you think that people are aware of the same things that you are, like my friend who was talking about this certain kind of AI, like surprised that I hadn't heard about it. I'm like, it's just not part of my world. It's not something that I'm shown or exposed to because what I'm shown and exposed to are the things that are most likely to continue keeping me in the feedback loop. I only see ads and posts and information that have a very high likelihood of captivating my attention and therefore energy. You know those graphics where it's like a, a depressing illustration of all these people on the subway and there's like a, like a, like a suction of their face just melting into their phone? That's the goal of the system, right? It's the goal of any business or profiting structure to keep the participant on which its success relies engulfed and coming back for more. Um, I swear to gosh that the best thing we could do for ourselves be on our phones as little as possible and i like every time i see ads like just some of the things that i'm shown i'm always like hide this ad hide this ad this is not relevant to me this is not relevant to me this is not relevant to me whenever you're whenever you just kind of keep scrolling through things you're complicit to the fact that it's continuing to take and track your information um 
my god the the police robots in new york city launching in times square yeah all of this stuff i can't believe i never finished this thought from like 10 minutes ago but i was saying it's all happening far too fast for us to convene and reflect collectively together to talk about like i mean how is this really affecting your life how are you you know what are, what are your worldviews? what do you what do you think is going on you know it's all happening so fast that people are looking to the quote unquote authorities to get that information like what well what does it mean we don't we don't know we can't tell yet it's the people are the benchmark of how it's going and how are the people uh you know sicker slower fatter and 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 less as as, as least healthy as they've ever been more, more depressed than they've ever been uh there's so many different ways to get help and get support and have supplements to fi fix your broken diet and your broken mind and medication and alternative medications because you know everybody was on adderall and now there's all these focus things and blah 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 it's always more 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 like why hasn't everybody Consider that the solution is less, 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 less of all of it, less of all of it, less food, right? M Michael Pollan's book, less food, but better food. We need to eat far less than we think. We need sunlight and water. <laughs> we are batteries, right? We're biological organisms that require a delicate balance of things to succeed and thrive. And there are things that have irreplaceably entered our systems. that are incredibly threatening to that. And again, like I will say, people are like, well, you know, if we're being poisoned, then then why isn't everybody dying? Like they, they are, oh, they are, oh, we are. Yeah, every, everybody is. I mean, we all are anyway, but are we as a people expanding and thriving and creating more freedom and more creativity and more light and more hope in the world? Or are things getting more controlled and more bleak and more reliant on a hand that both giveth and taketh away? Uh, both at the same time, I think. I think that the stories and the things that humanity needs to hear are not the stories that get told. Um, I mean, I know that I'm coming off as like a little manic and crazy and I can't really like continue on my single thought of, of idea, but this is what I need to do this morning is just spill all of this and, and, and feel better for it. I do feel optimistic and positive in the sense that I know I'm gonna be getting better at focusing on what it is that I need to communicate about and, and, and knowing and having faith that, you know, even if one person were to ever see any of this and be like, I feel like that too, then that's a win for me, for the, for the other person, you know, my, my single viewer, it's just important for people to know that they're not alone. The whole thing is set up for us to feel further and further, you know, displaced from people right? Like Instagram, I think we're more compelled. Like if, if I'm going through a really hard time and I'm like, Ugh, I just need to take a hot selfie and put it on my Instagram and get some external validation and be reminded that I'm a, you know, a person that, um, whatever it is, the, the horrible feedback loop that happens in the brain, right? Or like retail therapy. Like I need, I need to just, <sighs> buy something new or anybody's vices right like i i need a drink i need a cigarette i need to i just want to play my video games and tune out i just can't wait to just you know get home and watch tv and tune out we all have something that helps us just <clears throat> tune it all out um and i think the the thing about it is that the more and more like say i do that i really want just to like get some likes on a photo to help my little self-esteem feel better uh I guess the people that would see that would be like, oh, like she's doing really well, you know? <laughs> I don't have an obligation to be like, I'm posting this because I need a little uptick in my mood and things aren't actually going well at all. I don't have to say that. I, I don't feel it's necessary. That's not how I use my Instagram. I use it as a, a, you know, a digital collage of things that I think are pretty, including myself. And that's okay. You know, it's, it's my Instagram. Um, that's why I'm trying to do this YouTube because that's not the, all there is to 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 me or what I think and how I feel and how I want to communicate and show up in an online space where like I it's all fake, right? Our, our food is fake. People's fucking faces and bodies are fake at this point. Uh, news is fake. Media is fake. Little policemen are fake. <laughs> 
So what is reality, right? And then there's that show coming out. I just saw it, like it's insane to me. Okay, this takes me back to Super Bowl ads where I think it was Adam Driver and he's like, how do you know what is real? Like, how can you not see at this point how much effort is going into intentionally destabilizing collective society and trying to unhinge us from being able to discern what's real you know like i believe that a lot of um really cute animal content videos like stunts all of it's computer generated or ai generated and and a lot of people are like oh so cute it's a it's a it's a bunny being held by or like riding a goose wearing a sun hat you know and it looks so real but it's like i, I, I don't think so <laughs> I don't. I think you can tell uh, when images are patched together. You t it like it takes a lot of um, what once you see, you can't unsee. I know that's cliche and it's all like uh, the conspiracy rabbit hole, but it's true. Um, the, the, I think it's a Sydney Sweeney show that's coming out. Something about you know based on a true story, right? Uh, <laughs> but the timing of its release, yeah. Um, and then she's she's something like a she had a military past and sworn to silence and reality and she's like well if i if i if i know about this then why can't i talk about it again just feeding into all of this release of information these these soft launches these blatant disclosures but it's all like it is fiction it is sci-fi like stranger things portals opening uh uh <laughs> portals to different dimensions like basically i'm just in this wired incredulous state of validating my inner child and being like yeah I've, I've known for the majority of my life that there is something that's true and then there's everything else that's built on top of it and as i've gotten older and as i've grown up in a world that's gotten further and further washed out to sea from the shore of reality i'm like there's a reason why i feel this way there's a reason why i see this way and i know that other people feel that way too you know and when it comes to like when people talk about light workers, they're intentionally put at different places around the globe because when you do certain things where you can spread your energy and light out, right? I think I've talked about this in other videos, but who knows what the order of, you know, how I post these is going to be. I'm aware of how my aura can touch and affect other people and how big I can get it. Like if I'm alone for a long time out in nature, my aura gets really big. It's a safe place for me to be able to do that. It rejuvenates me to be able to do that, to just cast it out, push it out on all sides of me. Uh, you know, imagine light workers, people who have certain awarenesses and abilities energetically to kind of stabilize this really wonky energy that's happening because we're all like little, you know, particles and a copper battery going, it doesn't feel good. What is going on? Blah, blah, blah to kind of unplug from that and be like, oh, it's rough. Uh, I want to infuse this whole general vicinity with calm, with stability. There's a vibration that I'm going to make the dominant vibration here to stabilize this. There are people like myself who are doing that all over the world. And when they do that, those frequencies and those vibrations, they will, you know, they'll create a net again, twisties, grids, ley lines. Mother Earth, right? We, I, in fact, uh, I believe people are positioned on certain points of the Earth to correlate with Mother Earth's like ley lines and and guy, guy, Pachamama energy of the uh, of the globe. Yeah, I just I I feel very excited about the potential for other people to not be as depressed as they are now. That's my hope, because I feel like I have a. Uh, pretty worthwhile story and journey to share around how mental illness, mental health, spirituality, spiritual awakenings, quote unquote, dark nights of the soul, um, your own abilities, your own experiences, like all of that needs to be talked about. We need to give language to it. We need to give examples to it. Uh, we need to be able to hold seemingly con contradictory belief systems and ideas together and kind of let them break our minds apart and then see what's left, you know, after it all falls away. What are the truths that remain? Oh, there's just so much. I believe this is gonna be a start. Again, it's April 21st, 2023. I believe that this is gonna be the start of a really good chapter for me where hopefully I kind of can get my act together and be more useful, you know, because I know that, um, I said this the other day to friends, 
it is as if they are my my guides my spirit team my angels saints ancestors are hanging out on my doorstep just knocking on the door saying like we want to come through we have a lot to present to you we want you to open the door let us in and we're going to bring you all of this uh you know information and stuff and i have a very full life outside of all of this and but that's always been the case and it's like doors being banged down uh whether or not i willingly open it it's opening and it's uh it's very I feel very blessed and honored to have access to the things that I do. Um, I'm gonna be talking a lot about Archangel Metatron, again, with the sacred geometries, uh, foundations, cosmology, structures of the world. That's why I see the twisties, because I'm a channel of Archangel Metatron. That's why I see energy, it shapes and fractals very clearly, and it's why I'm so fixated on patterns and growth and repetition and cycles. Um, it's an honor, right, to be able to have that connection and be somebody who can be utilized for actualizing that right because you know people are like well if angels are real then why wouldn't they just come down and 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 have a what i don't know a rapture or reckoning and, and 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 show us themselves or something and it's like that's not what the world is that's not what the cosmic agreement is oh man there's so much complex behind the scenes stuff around um excuse me around the way things are constructed and where we're at now but again what's really cool about this too is that sometimes when i talk about it i'm learning things again for the first time that's a catch-22 i'm learning things for the first time or expressing them in a new way it's like the the prism of my mind merkaba i wish i had my green adventuring crystal um just imagine a multifaceted prism like a star but it's like a you know pyramidal spinning 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 the concepts in my mind if, if that's you know what they are light crystals prisms holograms these things these collapsing uh metaphors that kind of try to encapsulate something ineffable that we will never be able to describe it spins and every time it turns again i'm like oh a new angle a new side a new thing a new facet i've never seen that before but it was always there because it's oh it's it was part of it was just you know the dark side of the moon the thing that we're not being shown um constantly spinning right <laughs> dark side of the moon that's a good analogy too for like I, I think a lot of people if we don't believe it which is okay you don't have to believe in anything uh it's up to you how cool is that we all get to choose but then you have to accept that other people get to choose too you don't have to agree with other people in order to live and let live you know uh at the end of the day if you go after something or someone and say this is bad like i'm thinking about the daisy of death again be it, you know that that whole thing those people well intentioned as they may be are still speaking negativity they're still saying this is bad this is bad <laughs> you know it's the same concept uh of like if you're trying to, uh, if you're in sales or in psychology or something, you would not say to somebody, we want this to be stress-free. You would say, we want this to be easy. We're here to help you have a good experience because the word stress is the, the, the vibratory energetic signature of words, of language, of symbols. That's what communicates, not the word itself. So when you say stress-free, you're still saying stress. You're still bringing stress literally into it brought it into the sentence you brought it into the space yeah of course they understand what you mean it's not like they're gonna be like she said stress i'm triggered no but insert quote the world is not ruled by words and logic the world is ruled by symbols and colors right and again <laughs> all of the conundrums that are like it is laughable how how desperate people are to ignore certain things and and not have to deal or reconcile with what the world's showing us today like oh i lost it that's okay yeah i gotta go get my starbucks um